I'm uh, back in the sewing room and I've added the lace ruffle to the bottom edge of my skirt and I'm holding the camera by hand so I hope I don't jiggle it too much. I'm going to show you a little bit of what I've done. I've got the skirt, well half of the skirt laid out on my big table here and as you can see that's the center where all the pretty embroidery is. I'm going to get up over this. You see what I'm doing right here? I've, um, I've trimmed my lace edging and I'm um, shaping the tatting right up to the edge of it and I've mitered it right here and I've found that once you've um, you know soaked this tatting and dried it and steam pressed it it's very supple and very easy to bend I'm not having to steam or or use this tatting wet at all to get it to curve it's, it's acting really nicely and again I just dipped this in coffee to you know take the white out it's just a little bit cream but let me come over here and show you exactly what I did with the the lace now I placed this lace directly on top of my fabric and you know zigzagged along the gathering stitch and see if I can get in close here I trimmed the edge right next to my stitching right there I zigzag stitched this on instead of straight stitched it. Um, but I've just trimmed that right along the edge. And what I'm doing here is I'm using some glue based it, which is one of my favorite products. And I'm coming along here and just putting little dots right here on the edge. And then I'll take the lace and I line it up on the edge and I'll put some stab pins in until it dries and then when it dries I take the stab pins out and I pin it flat so I can take it to the sewing machine and stitch it and I'll zigzag, zigzag stitch it on this side and on this side. Now what I want you to see on the underside is that I have flipped my hem allowance up. And the good thing is I kind of let this skirt rest a bit. I let the uh, bias parts of it kind of hang and rest which made the uh, hem a little bit kind of uneven and so when I laid it out I just evened it up with a air erasable marker and then I lined my lace up on top of that line so that I'd have a nice smooth pretty curve and an even you can see where this this is a really really tiny seam allowance there and this one's a little fatter and this is even a little fatter so this is where I was evening, evening up my hemline. Well, I just pressed this back with an iron after I finished so that when I stitch this edge with a zigzag, I'm also going to be grabbing this fold edge at the same time. Then I'm going to come back in before I stitch the top part of the uh, lace. I'm going to come back in and trim this seam allowance right next to the zigzag stitching of the first pass on the bottom edge here. Once I've trimmed that um, seam allowance, I'm going to come back and stitch the top one. So the sequence is to um, press this, the hem allowance up on the back side, then shape your lace, stitch the bottom edge, and while you zigzag, you're going to catch that fold edge of the hem allowance at the bottom. You're going to turn it over trim off the hem allowance next to the stitching then come back to the front and zigzag the top of this once all of this has been zigzagged in I'm going to come back and add a second layer on top budding the two headers together and zigzag on that and I'll, I'll come back and show you that part for now we're putting in our first row of tatting on the hem okay we're back and in the last segment I showed you how I um, gathered and stitched the lace edging on top of the fabric then I covered the little um, I cut the the seam edge close to the stitching on the um, lace edging and then I folded the seam allowance back then we covered it with the first row of tatting here's my second row of tatting right here and all I did was shape it so that the bottom edge of this, this tatting butted to the bottom edge of this tatting and I zigzagged it here making sure that these two matched perfectly then I went back and I zigzagged along the top edge and of course you will have to miter right here at this point um, and this curve is the tightest curve on the design and it was it it went in easy it shaped very easy I didn't have to pull any threads or anything like that 
So now that I have my both of my layers, let me show you what this looks like from the, the wrong side. Now before, remember I told you that we flipped our seam allowance back and it was all different lengths. I had narrow and wide um, pieces of seam allowance along here and then once we zigzagged the first row of tatting on, we caught that fold edge. Then we came back and we cut right next to that zigzag stitch which holds that um, seam allowance back and it also um, finishes the edge so you wouldn't have any raveling. And you'll see the zigzag stitching from the back side. It's a little messy but it, it serves a good purpose to finish the front of the, the skirt and we don't have to have a lining layer. So that's kind of what it's going to look like from the back side and this is what it will look like from the front side. So in the next segment I'm going to um, we're going to put the skirt onto the bodice and I'm going to show you the final dress, Madeline dress up on the body form and show you a bit about the hand-picked zipper that I put in the back.